Hi everyone. Um, I set up my kind of little studio area over here and I have just realized as I'm sitting here that the um, air conditioning is freaking freezing. It's blowing like this is the spot where it all hits. When I'm sitting on my bed I'm like I can't even feel it. Anyway, this is a this is not a pagan video. This is actually about Canadian politics because um, I've been following the story about Jody Wilson Raybould and Justin Trudeau and the whole um, Attorney General scandal. And uh, so basically what happened was, I can't remember the name of this big corporation in Quebec that has headquarters in Quebec, but um, supposedly they were under investigation for corruption and nefarious activities and um, when the public prosecutor was reviewing the case and deciding whether to prosecute or not um, it was suggested to the Attorney General which was Jody Wilson-Rabel that she um, recommend a DPA which is like a plea bargain. It's a deferred prosecution um, agreement, I believe is the term. I'm really bad with abbreviations, but anyway, so she looked it over and decided that it wasn't eligible for that because actually in the past, the DPA has only been used um, in very special cases and usually not financial cases, but um, usually some kind of really big human rights issue and uh, and then supposedly she was subjected to quite a bit of pressure from um, the Prime Minister and his subordinates, including the um, clerk council privy, clerk for the council privy, something like that, and um, who is supposed to be nonpartisan, like he, he would have been he worked for the conservative government and now he's working for the liberal government and um and he's really he's allowed to advise the attorney general but he's not supposed to really push one way or another like he's not really supposed to have an agenda but in this case um he crashed a meeting that she had with the prime minister in order to put his two cents in and then also um so she was actually going to this meeting with the prime minister to discuss in, the rights of indigenous people and then the clerk um, Michael Warnick Michael Warnick was also there kind of um, surprise and they started they immediately raised the issue of this case and that they really had to find a solution and so she asked them directly are you attempting to interfere in my role as the Attorney General and they said no no, no, we're not doing that, but we really have to find a solution. And um, so basically this was all in her testimony, testimony that she put before the Justice Committee, which I watched, it was like four hours. And um, <clears throat> now she, her testimony was quite believable. I don't really know, like she said that she has texts and stuff to back it up. And that now all of her supporters are saying, oh, well, I wouldn't even question her um validity in this and i kind of hope that she has them on hand though because i feel like you know if you're accusing the prime minister of something he's definitely gonna try to say that you're lying or confused which is what he's doing he's trying to say that she misunderstood um but the really weird one for me was that the clerk of the privy council called her at home and was kind of talking in quite an inappropriate way for a clerk of the Privy Council and, and saying that the Prime Minister was very um, determined to resolve this issue and that uh, he kept kind of making these veiled threats like, um, I don't know what's going to happen and I don't know in his current mood what he might do sort of thing. And um, so I thought that was inappropriate. Um, the people who were sort of cross-examining her at the Justice Committee, which were members of different parties, including the NDP, 
were kind of, um, but of course she was being cross-examined cross most adversarially by the Liberal Party PMs who were definitely asking things like why she didn't resign, which I don't really get why that's even a question. Like, she's doing her job as the Attorney General. She thought that her position was inviolate and sacrosanct, and she just didn't understand why the Prime Minister was being so annoying, basically. Um, but I don't think she ever really thought that she was in, that her job was in any, any danger. But then after she said no to the clerk on the phone, um, I think like a couple of weeks later, she was demoted to the Minister of Veterans. And, uh, and okay, to be fair, the Minister of Veterans had just vacated his post. So he had resigned, I think. And so they were looking to fill that post, but obviously it's not as important a role as the Attorney General. And there wasn't really any reason to, like, if you really just want to fill the role to me, it makes more sense to pull someone up rather than bring someone down anyway. Um, so Jody, the Attorney General Jody, is a um, First Nations um, person, uh, Indigenous person of Canada, and she is from the Wehi Kai Nation. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I did look it up, but I, my memory is not perfect. And um, and she, that's one of her big topics, um, which is frankly very necessary in Canada right now because there's really not that many people who are standing for. First Nations peoples and issues. Um, Justin Trudeau claimed that he was, but then he's like plowing ahead with the pipe, trans, trans Mountain Pipeline um, for economic reasons, once again. And, um, and so I watched the um, House of Commons arguments where they're trying to get Justin Trudeau to um, come before the Justice Committee and he just keeps every time they ask him a question he just stands up and says i will not apologize for standing for canadian jobs and um and it sounds like he's stuck on repeat like a broken record like he really doesn't come off very well he looks very very nervous i kind of feel bad for the guy because i actually think that the real evil in this case was the clerk of the privy council who also gave testimony in front of the justice justice committee and quite frankly just looked like a snake but um he so i mean i actually i think that what justin trudeau did in this case was really wrong but i don't think that i don't get the evil vibe from him in the way that i do with some of these other old boys that are also involved and also the minister of finance also tried to put pressure on her and really the minister of finance has no business talking to the attorney general i think i mean it's financial concerns really i don't think come into a um, legal case like you know protecting Canadian jobs is sort of a weak excuse at that point there what they were trying to say was that the um, the reason that they were standing for Canadian jobs was or the reason they wanted to do the DPA the deferred prosecution agreement was because there are a lot of people within the company in Quebec who um, didn't know anything about the nefarious activities and they would be affected by a public trial, um, a public legal proceeding, and they were trying to protect them. Um, my personal, and now Justin Trudeau is saying like that it's always uh, appropriate for the um, Attorney General to entertain discussions and advice on any case she's working on. But there's also something on the legal books that like basically um, to try attempt to interfere with the Attorney General's decision is a criminal offense and it's punishable for up to 10 years in prison. Um, I think like, like to me it's common sense that if you go to the Attorney General as the Prime Minister, already you're on shaky ground because you're the Prime Minister, so you have to be sensitive to your position and her position. But also, 
like you can mention it once like oh you know a lot of jobs could be lost if if um there's a public proceeding but if you then go back and repeat it that's not really a discussion or new information that's really just you pushing for what you want and then if you go a third time i actually do think that that is crossing the line into pressure um anyway so i have basically i had been following a lot of videos about trump and then um the American political situation, then I started feeling guilty because I don't really know anything about Canada. And right then, this whole thing about Jody Wilson, Raybould's Ray blew up on the internet, and I sat down and watched the um, four-hour testimony that she gave and uh, was quite confused at first because they used a lot of abbreviations that I, you know, I didn't know what a DPA was. Um, and then she's also using abbreviations for all these positions, uh, roles in the government, and I didn't really know what any of them were. But now I have a better picture. And um, what was disturbing to me when I went on YouTube to watch all these videos is that, of course, now the conservative government, the conservative party is really rabid against Justin Trudeau, which um, I understand. But I feel like they're not looking, they're not being very... Um, objective they're kind of looking at it in a very partisan way and um and of course all the comments on these videos is they these conservative people and also far right-wing people who are making what sounds to me like quite fascist comments like just you know um this is a result of communism and I, i'm sorry like the guy was putting pressure on an attorney general um like, I'm not saying that communism is good, but he for financial interests, and he has interests in that company. Like, is there anything less communist, really? Anyway, so um, I don't kind of understand what they're on about. Just because the Liberal Party is considered to have communist leanings, which quite honestly, I really don't think it does. I think you could, you could accuse the NDP of that, but I think that the, the Liberal government in Canada especially, like we use the term liberal to mean someone with um, humanitarian values and, and you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, they're into alternative medicine and social services and, but, um, and, you know, gay rights and all that sort of thing. But actually in Canada, the Liberal Party doesn't really represent those values very well. What it does represent is um, a lot of sleaze because I have noticed that the Liberal government in Canada, every time it gets elected, um, its specialty seems to be promising something and then not doing it. And uh, which is, you know, that's just the way politics works. But I noticed that it's more pronounced with the Liberal Party. Anyway, um, so basically, I learned a lot about that. And I basically just wanted to express that um, I thought that Jody came off really well. And whether, I mean, she is a politician, so I'm sure that she has her shortcomings. And I mean, I noticed on, I noticed some stuff on social media that um, First Nations Indigenous people are not that happy with her necessarily because they keep complaining about things that she hasn't managed to achieve for them. And um, however, it can't get worse than it is. Like, I mean, Trudeau put a few things into effect for Indigenous people, so it's already a little bit better than before, but I, I feel like if we have Indigenous people, First Nations people, or Inuit people in government, that that is going to be better for them. And I personally, you know, as a white privileged class, I don't feel threatened by um, people coming in from different ethnic backgrounds into politics I think is great and I don't feel like they're gonna do something bad to me I, I don't understand this phobia that people have about minority groups like um, as if they're gonna be less compassionate I like the idea like you know black candidates gay candidates female candidates I like the fact that these are people who actually understand injustice because they've been on the receiving end of it so I actually feel like they are better placed to stand up for human rights and and just basically care about people in the country 
and I don't think they're just going to limit it to to their demographic. You know what I mean? So, um, I think that that's all I want to say on the topic for now. I just really was quite wound up, and I think that I bored my dad and my friends about this topic because I wanted to talk about it all the time, and um, and I didn't want to talk about it with the people that were arguing on YouTube. Although there's a possibility of that happening on my video, I realize, which I. I'm not saying don't do that. Um, so I'm going to leave this video there, and I just wanted to kind of. Um, it was it was nice to see basically anything First Nations related in politics and the news because I see so little of that, and um, in that way it was a little bit inspiring. And I thought that she made a good showing of herself. You, you could criticize some of the things about her. Um, her testimony but I actually thought that overall it was quite solid and um, okay so I will leave this there and I'm going to go and upload this so blessed be everyone <laughs>